I was about to challenge myself to texture painting. So I started browsing through ArtStation, trying to find a piece that looked interesting and not too easy. And this artwork suddenly grabbed my attention. And the moment aside, I knew it was exactly what I was looking for. The piece was created by the artist Igor Kapustin. I DM'd the artist to see if I could make a 3D version of his work. And he was totally supportive and welcomed the idea. And that's basically how the whole project started. I kicked things off with a basic sphere just to block out the overall shape. For that I used Grab Brush. Uh, you can also use Grab 2D Brush. Which basically pulls everything in a flat screen space way. So whatever angle you're looking at the model from, it grabs and moves the whole area, even parts the brush isn't directly touching. It makes shaping way easier. Moving forward, I added a multi-res modifier and make sure you turn on sculpt base mesh. Otherwise, whatever you sculpt on a higher subdivision level won't carry over to the lower levels. And after I was done, I applied the multi-res modifier. Now that the mesh was heavier, I started adding the smaller details. It took a bit of time to match the details on the back of the model with the reference, but eventually it lined up. At this point I duplicated the model and on the new copy I started masking the eyes and mouth shape. In fact I began with a simple mask, then unmasked the areas I didn't need and refined the shapes from there. Then I polished the mask a little and used mask slice that basically cuts out the mask parts from your model. After that I used the smooth brush or just held shift to soften the sliced edges. Then I added a solidify modifier to give that new piece some actual thickness. I set a reasonable thickness value and applied it. Now I needed a remesh and after that I used the mesh filter with the smooth option to soften the overall shape. You can also go in with the regular smooth brush to fix any areas that still looks too sharp. Then using the grab brush, I adjusted the inner parts of the model so they match the reference as well. If you see the back of the model getting messy, don't worry, I used box height so I could temporarily hide the back and control things more easily. You can always unhide everything later. Alright, I kept refining the model to match the reference and this part can take a while because you're trying to get everything exactly right. But in the end, paying attention to these small details really makes your model more interesting. I made the teeth starting a single sphere. I basically deleted the top part and scaled it a bit to get a tooth-like shape. Then I sculpted the sides to make them sharper and dissolved some of the loop cuts and made them less dense. After that I duplicated the tooth and sculpted each one to match the reference. I also trimmed the tips a little because since we won't see them close, they don't need to be perfectly sharp. For the plaque or dirt around the teeth, I created it using a bezier curve, gave it some thickness and used the handles to control them. For some of the plaques, I remeshed the spheres and just sculpted them with snake hook brush and grab. And as you can see, I did some final polishing on the plaque around the teeth using just grab brush and snake hook and nothing fancy for the detailing. Then following the reference, I used the grease sharp brush to black in the separations. They don't need to be perfectly sharp or precise because in the end we are going to paint the model, so having them perfectly clean or even isn't that important. And I did the exact same process for the stem. I started with a sphere, shaped it using the grab and snake hook, and then added some lines and texture with the clay strips brush. And that gave me the result you see here. 
You can also remesh a bit while sculpting to get better results. For the tree stump, I started with a cylinder, remeshed it and then used the grab brush to adjust the overall form. And repeated the same workflow here as well. Clay strips, some final polishing and another remesh to finalize the form. But for the leaves, you can build them in a bunch of different ways. For the first one, I traced the outline of a leaf on a plane using the knife tool, then connected the opposite vertices. And after that, I turned on proportional editing and moved the vertices around to give the leaf its natural bend. I added a subdivision modifier so I'd have more control over the shape. At this point there was a mistake I had to fix. The red polygons you see had flipped normals and their vertices weren't merged with the rest of the mesh so I fixed them and for the second leaf I subdivided the plane several times and drew the leaf shape using a mask. Then from the mask menu I used mask strike which creates a new mesh based on your mask and automatically giving it a solidify modifier. I applied the modifier, remeshed the leaf and again used mesh filter to smooth and shape it. Since this project uses leaves that have different details on each side, it's better to keep them slightly thick so we can texture paint both sides later. Okay, after finishing all the leaves, it was time to match the tree stump with them and fix the areas where they were intersecting. Once the modeling and sculpting were done, I used the decimate modifier to lighten the meshes. It basically works like ZBrush's decimation master and reduces the mesh density while keeping the structure almost intact. After decimating, you might see some artifacts on certain areas, but you can clean those up with a low strength smooth brush. I applied it to pretty much everything except the eyes and teeth. And yeah, you could do retopology instead, but for this project, I didn't think it was necessary. Decimate was just a faster option. I even deleted some parts that weren't visible after decimate, like this one. And in the end, the whole model went from several million vertices down to about 82k. Alright, once that stage was done, it was time for the part most people try to avoid. But honestly, I actually enjoy it. You'll be unwrapping. I marked the seams along the sharp edges of the model, prioritizing areas that wouldn't be visible. I split the pumpkin itself into three sections for unwrapping. For the teeth, I marked the seams on the back, since the back of the teeth is basically 99% invisible. And while I was at it, I also manually simplified the topology of the teeth a bit. In the end, I packed the whole pumpkin onto one UV tile and the tree plus the leaves onto a separate UV tile. Now for the texture painting, this was the hardest part and I already knew I couldn't reach the exact level of the original artwork, but I still had to give it my best. This is where the real quality of the project shows. So first I assigned a base color for each part to paint on. For the painting itself, I used the Yuku Paint add-on and I tried to sample colors directly from the reference image I had open in PureRef and painted them onto the model step by step. I work on separate layers so I could adjust, blur, or even erase some parts later without messing up the areas around them. And just to mention it, I used 2048 by 2048 as the texture size for all the layers.
For the brighter or white areas like the highlights and the eyes, I set that layers blend mode or channel to add that makes those parts look naturally glowing without any extra work. The closer the color is to pure white, the brighter it appears. Also, if you don't want to accidentally paint on other parts on the model while working on one section, just hover your mouse over the part you want and press L to mask it. But make sure paint mask is enabled first. I should say that this stage takes time and choosing the right brush really matters. And Blender's default brushes were a bit limited for me, so I downloaded a few from Craft Reaper on Gumroad and they helped a lot and the painting process got much faster. In some areas you need to play around with brush opacity to get the right result.
something I should add here is that, as you can see, the teeth and the lower part, basically the gum, are actually separate meshes. But by matching the color along the connection area, you can hide that separation and paint it in a way that makes them look like they're perfectly blended together. And if you notice, I did the same thing around the eyes, mouth and nose, where the UEs were split and the seams between them were visible. And doing this gives you a more cohesive and nicer looking result. Okay, here you go. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video.